Hello, everyone. And thank you for joining us for this very important update on our future plans for a modern regional three site hospital system here in Niagara. We are very excited about the progress we're seeing, including our upcoming community engagements throughout the region. For those of you I haven't met, my name is Lynn Guerrero and I am the president and CEO at Niagara Health. Although you can't yet see them on the screen and because this work crosses all areas of Niagara Health, I'm joined by the entire Niagara Health executive team. Also joining us as participants are members of the board of directors, some staff, some of our physicians, uh, volunteers and donors. Niagara Health remains committed to highlighting inclusion as a key driver for providing high quality care. I'm committed to continue to listen and learn more about the history and current experiences of Indigenous peoples and acknowledge my own responsibility to take meaningful action towards reconciliation in the healthcare system. So looking at our agenda today, we intend to emphasize our commitment to care, talk about the accountability of the hospital as well as our healthcare partners and our roles in the system. We'll be providing an overview of our future changes, how we are engaging with the community, and then providing some timelines to the plan. At the top of your screen, you'll find a button to submit questions throughout the presentation, so please feel free to do so. The executive team will try to answer as many questions as time allows at the end. We believe every person in our region deserves to live every day of their life in the best health possible. As a large community hospital, our focus on teaching and learning, research, innovation and partnership propels us to continually improve care and make a difference in people's lives. In 2023, Niagara Health was excited to launch our new strategic plan. The root of this plan is you, our patients and our community. Central to the plan was designing a hospital system around the needs of our patients, their families and loved ones. Our goal is to make it easier for you to access quality hospital services and to improve your experience. Our goal is to be here when you need us and be able to connect to community-based services when an acute care hospital is not needed. Niagara Health is one of Ontario's largest community hospital systems. What many people in the region don't know is that we operate one of the busiest emergency departments in the Hamilton Niagara Haldimand Brand region. Of large community hospitals in Ontario, Niagara Health has the fifth most beds in operation and the highest number of day surgeries and inpatient surgical cases in the Hamilton Niagara Haldimand Brand region. Niagara Health helps hundreds of thousands of local residents a year through our EDs, our diagnostic imaging services, surgical procedures and specialized care, including cardiac and kidney care, cancer and mental health and addictions. As you can see, our hospitals have a significant role in ensuring the delivery of emergency and acute care within our region. It's essential to recognize that hospitals are but one piece of a very complex healthcare puzzle. That's why we work with our partners across primary care, home care, long-term care, emergency medical system, public health, and community health. Healthcare is a shared responsibility amongst many providers. In order to deliver patient-centered, high-quality care, all pieces need to function together seamlessly. Of all healthcare providers you could encounter in your journey, your interaction with the hospital should be the shortest. High-quality healthcare is grounded in evidence, delivered in the right place and at the right time, with appropriately trained and qualified staff, and is built on strong partnerships. It's not based on any one thing like a physical building. Now more than ever, quality care relies on partnerships, whether that be through the Niagara Ontario Health Team, other hospitals, and colleges and universities. Niagara is currently experiencing a shortage of about 81 family physicians, resulting in 140,000 plus unattached patients which poses significant challenges in accessing primary care services for our community members. Despite our own specialist recruitment challenges, we've been collaborating closely with the region and our community physicians to expand primary care access in Niagara. I want to just mention, because there seems to be um, often some confusion, that Niagara Health does not have any oversight whatsoever over community-based primary care. 
So I just want to be clear that although that's not our accountability, we are working extremely hard with our local communities and with the Ministry of Health to ensure expanded access of primary care within the region. We do this because we know primary care is the foundation of a strong health system. All evidence points to that. Niagara Health's role as a hospital is to provide high quality emergency and acute care services, but we continue to go above and beyond to serve our community with innovative programs that help bridge the gaps caused by healthcare pressures and result in hospitals, particularly our emergency departments, being used as a safety net. Niagara is also experiencing a significant shortage of long-term care beds and similarly, workforce pressures in home and community care. This results in about 100 patients every day in hospital beds here in Niagara who could be discharged but don't have a bed to go to in the community or can't access enough home care to go home safely. You will hear these patients referred to as alternate level of care patients. Our healthcare system is highly interconnected with various components working together to provide comprehensive care for the Niagara region. When one part of the system faces challenges, it has a ripple effect that can be felt throughout the entire system. With Niagara having the third highest seniors population in Canada, residents often encounter chronic health issues such as arthritis, asthma, diabetes, and heart disease. Niagara residents have higher rates of chronic conditions than the provincial average. Best practice dictates that individuals with chronic care needs should be seen by community-based healthcare providers for optimal healthcare outcomes. Seniors want to age at home where they have better health outcomes than being in a hospital or a long-term care bed. Our demographics present some unique challenges for healthcare providers, including the hospital system. As the Niagara region continues to grow, so too does it demand for healthcare services. I bring up the profile of Niagara Health and the community to demonstrate the current pressures on the hospital so that there is a clear distinction that a regional hospital system is not a new plan, it has been decades in the making, but the pressures we are experiencing currently and will continue to experience strengthen the need for this plan and are only compounding as time goes on. So what's our plan? Niagara Health is charting a path forward to transform how we deliver services over the next decade while increasing our capacity and attracting more healthcare workers to our community. Our transforming care plan will build a leading modern and responsive health system across three cornerstone hospitals in Niagara Falls, St. Catharines, and Welland. This will allow us to provide the right care at the right time for every person in the Niagara region. Talking about our regional model is not new. In 2017, a master plan for Niagara Health Services across the region was approved by the Ministry of Health, inclusive of the three hospitals. The Ministry subsequently approved the South Niagara Site Capital Project as a first project supporting the master plan. So why are we evolving? At Niagara Health, we are facing four major challenges, team shortages, disconnected care, outdated infrastructure, and very limited physical capacity. We have over 400 staff vacancies with particular challenges in our emergency departments. We have challenges in recruiting nurses, personal support workers, and medical imaging technologists. This number does not account for physician shortages, which include emergency medicine trained doctors, anesthesiologists, and general internal medicine physicians. We are very fortunate to have an incredible human resources team who have now filled over 2,500 positions between April and December of last year alone. The immediate health and human resource challenge is one we will be dealing with for years to come. Disconnected care. So Niagara Health is still using paper records and outdated electronic systems, a piece of the puzzle that will be changing this coming September when we launch our new hospital information system. Unlike the St. Catharines Hospital, we lack specialty care across our sites and have limited opportunity to grow our research and academic partnerships. Above all, residents are confused on where to go for care our staff and physicians are requesting a more unified and connected system. All of our existing hospitals, aside from the Murata Family Hospital or the St. Catherine site, are outdated and not suited to continue providing quality patient care into the future. Our current sites in Port Coburn, Fort Erie and Niagara Falls 
are beyond the point of renovation to meet our future needs and the needs of the community. Our site in Welland requires significant renovation or redevelopment in order to be brought up to a standard that we are comfortable with. But these challenges, there lies an opportunity. In Niagara, we are incredibly fortunate to be building our second new hospital in the region. The new South Ho Niagara Hospital will allow us uh, additional space to effectively take care of more patients. We know that the South Niagara Hospital will provide 74% more capacity for MRI tests. It will accommodate 7,400 more senior wellness visits. It will add 156 more beds to the region and will include 12 additional hemodialysis stations. The changing healthcare landscape demands that we change to better serve patients and their families and increase hospital capacity in the region. The time to change is now, and we are lucky that we have a plan that's been more than a decade in the making. I'll now turn it over to my colleague, Angela Zangari. Good morning, everyone. My name is Angela Zangari, and I'm the Executive Vice President of Finance, Redevelopment and Facilities and the Chief Financial Officer at Niagara Health. I've had the pleasure of living in Niagara my whole life, and I've worked at Niagara Health for over 30 years now. We've been making excellent progress on our plan to transform care and move towards a model that benefits all Niagara residents, no matter where they live. In order to provide the best quality care to our patients, we must focus our limited resources and build seamless hospital care across Niagara with three cornerstone hospitals, the Murata Family, South Niagara, and Welland. These hospitals will provide patients access to the highest quality care by bringing together our staffing and expertise. We are well on our way to achieving our vision to replace outdated, outgrown infrastructure with modern hospitals that will enable us to deliver truly connected care for communities across Niagara. In addition, the system will provide access to specialized care in areas including mental health, cardiac, kidney, stroke, cancer, complex care, wellness and aging, eye care, and maternity care. And while different sites will have their own areas of expertise, all three hospitals will work together as part of a seamless system of care. This means that a patient will be able to go to any Niagara Health site, and even if that site doesn't offer the services they need, they will be quickly transferred to the site that does. There will be no wrong door. This vision also includes strong primary and community care led by the Ontario Health Team and community-based health partners. So what does this mean for our patients and families? Patients and families will be able to access more care and services in Niagara with state-of-the-art facilities that have modern technology, private rooms, more beds and services. By building a modern, connected hospital system, patients and their caregivers will be able to move seamlessly between services in our region. Transforming our hospitals and how we deliver care means patients will receive specialized care from the best clinical experts. Building a new and modern hospital system will also help us to recruit and retain more expert doctors, nurses, and staff right here in Niagara. This means more staff providing care to our patients, and it will help the region's recruitment efforts as state-of-the-art hospital facilities are attractive to community physicians as well. The new hospital system also brings significant benefits to our staff and physicians. Modern hospitals designed to the latest care standards will enable physicians and staff to overcome challenges to delivering quality care presented by the existing outdated outgrown facilities. State-of-the-art technology and equipment will support our team members to practice through their full capabilities and expertise and therefore attract top talent. Centers of excellence at our three cornerstone hospitals will drive quality across the organization and improve consistency in care standards and bringing together expertise and resources at three hospitals will ensure our resources are not spread too thin. It will improve communication, connection, and support among team members. A modern regional system will allow Niagara Health to make the best use of staff resources we have while positioning us to attract more talent in the future. Our community will have access to state-of-the-art hospitals with specialized 
seamless care. Specialized care means that no matter which hospital you visit, you will be cared for by a team of experts specializing in the care you need. Bringing together programs and services will create a seamless care environment, not only across the three hospital sites, but within our community partners. And bringing together our team creates collaborative and supportive environments that we already witnessed in the St. Catharines Hospital with our Women's and Babies Unit, in Welland with our eye care specialization, and in Niagara Falls with our stroke care. That's something I really want to emphasize for people. Quality health care is more than physical buildings. It's about access to modern equipment and highly trained staff and physicians. Everyone in Niagara knows the Walker Family Cancer Center is where to access the best cancer care in the region. Each of the three future sites will have similarly specialized programs that will offer the best of the best our local health care has to offer. I'm going to turn it over to my colleague Heather Patterson. Um, hi everyone, my name is Heather Patterson. I'm the Executive Vice President of our Clinical Operations at Niagara Health. I'm born and raised in Niagara Falls. Um, I actually started at the Greater Niagara General site as a candy striper and have over 25 years of healthcare experience. Um, I'm also a proud member of the nursing profession. To provide some context on the improvements of care in future state with the regional hospital system, let me introduce you to Mike, an example of a potential patient. Mike is a 74-year-old retired teacher who lives in Ridgeway. Mike is experiencing numbness in his face and has a severe headache. Mike becomes worried and calls 911. Our partners at Niagara EMS arrive at Mike's house and assess that Mike is having a stroke. Because of our partnership we have with Niagara EMS, they know that Mike should be taken to the Niagara Falls Hospital Emergency Department. Mike arrives at the Niagara Falls Emergency Department in 22 minutes and is seen by a dedicated stroke team. He is a candidate to receive the TPA clot busting drug. Mike is seen by a regional acute stroke team at the Niagara Falls site, but is unable to be admitted to the dedicated stroke unit due to lack of beds. Mike still receives the best expert care for stroke and begins rehabilitation. After discharge from Niagara Health, Mike attends rehab services at Hotel Du Shaver Hospital and Rehabilitation Center. In our future state, the new regional hospital system, EMS will take Mike to the new South Niagara Emergency Department. EMS and Mike arrive in only 15 minutes, and because of increased capacity in the new hospital, Mike is admitted to our Center of Excellence in Stroke, where he is surrounded by the most state-of-the-art equipment in a private room with the best clinical experts in one location. Now I'd like to introduce you to Michelle. Michelle is an engineer living in Niagara Falls. Michelle is driving home from work one night when she is hit by another car crossing the intersection. The other driver calls 911 and the paramedics arrive shortly after. She has a few fractured ribs on her left side and a herniated disc. EMS arrives and brings her to the Niagara Falls Site Emergency Department. She notices that the staff are frustrated with space available to provide care and she herself is frustrated at having to repeat her story several times to each health professional that she sees. After waiting in the emergency department for 12 hours for a bed, she is admitted to the inpatient unit and spends a week on our ward. There is very little privacy, both for her and her visitors. Her partner is stressed because the unit is an outbreak and he can never find parking when he comes to visit. She wishes she could, be, could have have a room to herself and wants to get out as soon as she can. In future state, Michelle would be taken to the new South Niagara Hospital. A nurse and physician would assess Michelle, take her health history, her vitals and capture the information in our new digital health information system. With a new digital system, Michelle does not need to repeat her story again, and our team can increase the accuracy and efficiency of care, reduce du duplication of errors, and help improve Michelle's health outcomes. Michelle only waits three hours in the emergency department as Niagara Health has added more capacity and increased health human resources, thanks to a new and modern build that has attracted new young talent. Michelle is admitted to a brand new private room on the unit. Michelle has privacy for her recovery, a private bathroom, and a spot for her partner to sit when he visits. With plenty of parking and multiple entrances at the new South Niagara Hospital, Michelle's partner finds a parking spot easily and can focus on supporting Michelle's healthcare journey. Lastly, we have Janet. Janet's a resident of Wellen. She's at work when she starts experiencing chest pains. She immediately stops what she's doing and calls 911. 
Niagara EMS uh, arrive, assess Janet, and determine that she requires emergency services. Janet is transported to the Welland Hospital Emergency Department. At the emergency department, Janet is stabilized. The physician and staff determine she needs elevated cardiac care. Janet is transferred via Niagara Health's internal transfer service to the Murata Family Hospital's Cardiac, Can cardiac Center of Excellence in St. Catharines. In our future state, there would be no change in Janet's care plan. Because we have modern facilities with specialized care, patients are seamlessly transferred to sites to receive the best clinical care from experts all in one location. These are small examples of how your care will improve under the new regional three-site hospital system. I'll hand it over to my colleague, Angela. Thanks, Heather. So where are we in this process to build a seamless hospital system? We're about halfway there. The St. Catharines Hospital, the first of our Cornerstones hospitals, was completed in 2013. We just broke ground last summer on the new South Niagara Hospital. And finally, we will be redeveloping the well in site pending confirmation of a capital planning grant from the province. What we know well and will include is 24 seven emergency services, day surgeries, various outpatient programs, mental health and addiction services and complex care. By the end of this process, we will have three modern hospitals that will be Niagara Health. The South Niagara Hospital will transform the way we deliver care. Niagara Health and our partners are creating a more modern and coordinated system of care that is patient and caregiver centered. The South Niagara Hospital will have 469 beds, increasing the regional capacity by 156 beds. It will offer a full scope of hospital services, as well as centers of excellence in complex care, wellness and aging, and stroke. It's exciting to imagine that the Welland Hospital could become uh, in the future. What we know, based of, on the approved plans for St. Catharines and South Niagara Hospitals, is Welland will have 24-7 emergency services with eight to 10 observation beds, have a long list of outpatient clinics and surgical services, mental health and addictions programs, diagnostic imaging, kidney care, specialists in eye care, and become an administrative hub for our team. Further staff and community engagement is required to submit a proposal to the Ministry of Health for the Welland Hospital site. Together, we can rebuild a campus that is more than a hospital. The hospital itself cannot provide everything. A redevelopment site could include preventative care by community health partners, such as nutrition classes, art therapy, exercise classes, a family health team, academic teaching campus for Niagara College, Brock University, McMaster University, and Trillium College. Unused land could be developed for senior supportive housing. Um, it could be an elevated transit hub, indigenous and spiritual healing spaces, or a community garden we have an opportunity to create something truly special together. Thank you, and I'll turn it over to Lynn. Thanks, Angela. So the road ahead, we recognize that there is uncertainty about the future of healthcare access, specifically in South Niagara. We understand that this can cause anxiety for those communities. This regional hospital system is the best way we can use our limited resources to ensure all residents of Niagara have access to high quality hospital care, no matter where they live. This means that residents will experience fewer transfers. The new South Niagara Hospital brings emergency care approximately seven minutes closer to Fort Erie residents. This transition of service will allow us to ensure patients are always getting the care they deserve. We strongly believe this is what is best for patients. We're working with our healthcare partners, the government and the mayors to expand access to primary care, mental health and diagnostic imaging services. This is demonstrated by the recent investment in primary care teams through the Niagara Ontario Health Team that was recently announced by the provincial government. Following the opening of the new South Niagara Hospital in 2028, we will sell our current sites in Niagara Falls to the city in exchange for local share the city will determine the best use for the site to benefit the community. We'll also transition programs and services from the Niagara Falls, Fort Erie and Co Port Coburn sites to the South Niagara and Welland sites when the new South Niagara Hospital opens. 
We're currently in discussion to transition services to primary care providers in the community so that there is no loss of services in Fort Erie and Port Coburn. Those municipalities will be given the first right of refusal of operation over those sites to determine the future of the facilities in exchange for local share contributions for the South Niagara Hospital. It is our hope that those communities might site new primary care teams at those sites. So engaging the community, Niagara Health has a long history of community engagement. We regularly reach out to our own teams and community on the planning and development of our future. For the South Niagara Hospital planning alone, we have hosted over 4,000 engagements with staff, physicians and community members to help make decisions right down to where electrical sockets will be placed on a wall. For our new strategic plan, we had input and feedback from more than 1,000 members of the Niagara Health team during the pandemic, if you can believe it, and engaged over 160 thought leaders, including the Ministry of Health, Ontario Health and regional, provincial and local partners. In the coming weeks and months, Niagara Health will be visiting communities around the region to educate and engage the public about our future vision. There will be opportunities to learn more about the regional model, the philosophy behind it, and for residents to provide feedback and input. We want to ensure the community understands the realities of today's healthcare landscape, our challenges, but to get involved. On behalf of the executive team, thank you so much for taking the time to listen to us today. We ask that you share the information with your friends, family and neighbours, and please participate in the upcoming community engagement sessions that will be held in person. Thanks again, and we are now going to address specific questions that have been pre-submitted for the webinar. Following, we'll go live to live questions that have come in from the chat. Thanks so much, and my colleague Mary Jane will facilitate the question and answer. Thank you to uh, Lynn, Angela and Heather. Um, so the first, the questions that we got pre-submitted through our engage email, I'll start with the first one. Uh, I'm excited to hear about allowing each hospital to focus on areas of specialization. Do you know what the focus will be of each hospital in a mature system for services not falling within those areas of focus? Will patient care be delivered by a hospital in another community? If so, which services would you anticipate being served outside of Niagara hospitals? So maybe I'll start Mary Jane. I think um, one of the slides uh, listed each of the specialization areas that will be um, located at each of the sites. Um, so I won't go through them uh, in detail, um, but I would like to just comment on the services not falling within um, those specialty areas and will patient care be delivered by a hospital in another community. Um, so there are certain services within the healthcare system at large, um, in Ontario for sure, that are only delivered in certain regional um, specialty hospitals. An example would be, for example, um, transplants would be an obvious one. We don't do uh, solid organ or uh, stem cell transplants here in Niagara, but um, those patients are very carefully uh, transferred to one of our partner hospitals, typically Hamilton Health Sciences, um, sometimes uh, a hospital in Toronto like Princess Margaret. Um, there are also um, cardiac cases where um, the chest will be opened that are sent to Hamilton. We don't do those procedures here, although we have a, uh, a um, shared program with Hamilton Health Sciences where we provide much cardiac care at the St. Catherine site and a specialty program. Um, so there will always be services and very specific, very highly complex procedures that happen in other hospitals. Usually we have a very solid partnership with that hospital. So our prime example there will be Hamilton Health Sciences for uh, cancer care, also for cardiac care, and then the Children's Hospital in Hamilton for, um, for uh, our, our pediatric uh, and baby population. So um, that's sort of the, the um, the organizations that partner with us to provide services outside, but you're seeing, seeing here the slide that lists the specialty programs that will be available at each of the three cornerstone hospitals. And I just want to um, reiterate what's all been already said. People do not have to remember this. No door is the wrong door. You can come to any of the sites in the future and you will be transferred to the right specialized team at the right location um, that best suits your needs. 
Thank you, Lynn. And I'll just pause and see if there's any other executive that would like to speak before I go on to the next question. Okay, perfect. Uh, next question is, what is the amount of funding that Niagara Health receives from the province of Ontario per financial year for each site it operates? Um, so thank you, Mary Jane, I can take that and thank you for the question. Um, Niagara Health has a budget of more than $600 million. Um, hospital budgets are complicated and they are not site specific, but rather based on services provided and staffing. 64% of our budget does not, it goes directly to pay for our staff, including nurses, allied health, etc. Thank you, Angela. Um, and now I'm going to go to some Q&As that have come in through the chat. Um, the first question for the executive team is, are the projected number of beds based on a regional population? And they're asking for what year in terms of um, what we based our planning on. Um, I think this is for Angela. This is probably projected to the South Niagara Hospital and what the beds, our projected planning beds for those are. Yeah, um, so initially when we were doing our planning, as Liz had, Lynn had mentioned about um, 2017 and our master plan, uh, we were basing it on Ministry of Finance data um, using 2015. Um, we since have updated that. In fact, uh, what we did was knowing actually that we're uh, being a resident of Niagara and a number of our team members are as well. Um, and kind of feeling that that number may be um, understated and and, um, and and potentially outdated. Uh, we went through and we actually pulled building permits um, and what we're seeing a con significant influx into Niagara. Um, so those numbers have been reflected from a couple of things, right? So based on ministry, the latest Ministry of Finance census data for Niagara, as well as um, updated, up-to-date building permits where we went into each municipality to see the increase um, in demand for housing for Niagara. Thank Great you. Great question. Thank Great you. question. Uh, next question. Uh, thank you for sharing these amazing updates. Thank you very much. Will Niagara Health continue to operate long-term care in the Welland Hospital as it was not mentioned in the slide? So perhaps I'll start um, and then anyone else can jump in. So the long-term care home in Welland uh, that we're incredibly proud of, by the way, did amazing through the pandemic. Um, we, uh, we have been in discussions with the Ministry of Long-Term Care about redevelopment of that home. So the long-term care home in Welland, as is the rest of the building, is quite outdated and actually will not meet future um, code and standards for long-term care in Ontario. So even if we weren't redeveloping the Welland site, we would have to completely redevelop the long-term care home, and it would actually have to be a separate building. Right now, it is attached to the hospital. So with all of that in mind, we're in negotiations with the Ministry of Long-Term Care right now about how best to redevelop that home, um, keep at least that number of beds, but hopefully more in, in Welland or at least in Niagara, because we know we are short beds. Um, and what's the best way to do that, given that um, capital redevelopment in long-term care is very different than it is for hospital-based care. So for example, to redevelop the hospital, um, the ministry pays 90% of construction and they pay that up front. We don't have to go out and borrow that money in order to build the hospital. Whereas in long-term care, that is not the case. We would have to front the capital um, for the long-term care home and then the ministry would return that 90% over um, many years, um, which means we would have to borrow the money up front. So it's a very different system for long term care. And so we're in negotiations with the ministry right now on how best to move forward. All right, I'm Harpreet Bossi. I'm the EVP of Strategy and Communications. I'm going to read the next question in case we're having some technical difficulties on Mary Jane's end. So um, the next question is How will eliminating two urgent care centers alleviate emergency department wait times? So maybe I'll start and then um, some of my colleagues can jump in. Um, so the um, I want to remind everybody on the call that the urgent care centers are not emergency departments. 
um, if people have an emergency um, in either of those two communities where the urgent care centers are located, they need to um, go to an emergency department in Welland or uh, Niagara Falls or St. Catharines um, or call 911 if they're not able to make it um, to one of the emergency departments. The urgent care centers um, are a bit of a stopgap, a bit of a safety net in those communities because those communities are facing some shortages in primary care and um, specifically family doctors. And I want to um, make sure I mention that the best primary care in the foundation of the healthcare system needs to be delivered in uh, comprehensive team-based models. The model of having an individual family doctor servicing thousands of people in a community on their own is very outdated and really does not meet the needs of the community. So what those communities really need is an expansion of team-based comprehensive primary care. Um, that's the model that the Ministry of Health is going to move forward to fund, and that is the model that best serves communities. The evidence is very, very clear. So what the plan is, is that once those sites are going to close in um, when the new hospital is built, which is projected to be in uh, 2028, so let's say four to five years from now, that those communities have access to team-based comprehensive primary care. That is what is in required in those communities, and then the urgent care centre um, would, would no longer be needed. Team-based primary care is available, should be available in those models after hours and on the weekend and patients should be able to have an appointment when they're sick, either the same day or next day. And that's the promise of expansion of those, uh, of those teams. It's important to note that, as I said, Niagara Health does not have any oversight over primary care. So there, we can't say we will be opening primary care teams in those communities. That is not something the hospital can do. However, we have been advocating very strongly with the provincial government, and we've been working very, very closely with the mayors of those communities to um, ensure that we are on a path to expand primary care services in those communities, including after hours and weekends. So we have four to five years to get there. There's been an initial announcement that includes expansion of primary care for Fort Erie and Port Coburn, and we'll be working um, closely with the mayors on that. I would encourage those communities and the municipalities um, themselves, the cities, to be um, looking at this as a priority for them in the coming years. Um, this is not something that we can do on our own, and it's not something we can even lead um, necessarily, it has to come from the communities. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it there. And if any of my um, executives want to add, they can go ahead. Okay. Thanks, Lynn. Our next question is, how will patients from Fort Erie get to the hospital at 2 a.m. and then transport seamlessly to the hospital that offers the services they need? The next question following up to that is who covers the cost? Sorry, what was the second part, Michaela? Second part is who covers the cost? Who covers the cost? So um, let me take this one step at a time. So as far as transportation to the hospital goes, it would remain as it is now. So right now, if a resident um, of Fort Erie required uh, an emergency visit, they would be driving typically to Niagara Falls um, or calling 911. Um, that will not change in the new system. If someone has an emergency, that's the same uh, path that they will follow. If uh, that person was to arrive at the new South Niagara Hospital, but they required cardiac services, for example, they would be uh, transferred to the St. Catherine site or the, the Murata family site for cardiac care. That transfer would be done internally through um, hospital services. And so there will be no cost for internal site-to-site -site transfers for patients. Of course, the cost to arrive at uh, an emergency department would be either the, the patient themselves driving to the eMERGE, which currently is the case, or if that patient calls 911, they would be picked up by EMS and taken to the hospital, which is current state. The next question is, will this recording and or slides be available after the session? And the answer to that is yes on our uh, community engagement page on our Niagara Health website, niagarahealth.on.ca. We will have this uh, presentation available uh, after the webinar. Our next question is, 
Will the Welland new site be developed on the old site and include long-term care beds? Will there be dedicated ALC space? I can start, and thank you for the question, um, Angela. Uh, so the Welland Hospital will be redeveloped on the existing Welland site. Um, we're just at the beginning stages of that. Uh, we'll begin with some um, in the coming year with some redevelopment happening at the site within within the building itself, um, and then look to further expansion. I believe Lynn did speak to the uh, long term care. As far as we were, you know, our hope is to continue to have long term care uh, beds on the uh, Welland site. Um, it's uh, a need in Niagara and something that we support as well. Next question is you talk about access to the highest quality care. At times, people don't have access to it due to weather, which makes transportation difficult or impossible. There are also serious bottleneck issues with ambulances at emergency. How are you addressing these issues? Um, hi, hi, Lynn. I, I think I can take that question <laughs> if it's okay. Um, so uh, with respect to our partnership with Niagara EMS and our ambulances, uh, we actually work in a collaborative model for solutions around uh, managing these bottlenecks. And so um, some of them include initiatives that are within uh, the emergency department, um, including programs like Fit to Sit, where we would assess patients um, and transfer them to the waiting room if that's possible. Um, the Niagara Health has all also um, added um, additional resources um, in our emergency departments, what we are called our ED tech, um, to help with offloading. Um, I think it's important to understand as well that uh, we, in the community, there are other options, um, including community paramedicine um, initiatives through our Niagara OHT that help support uh, patients to manage at home. And so the strong partnership with Niagara EMS continues. And I think we're always looking at strategies to improve um, our, our delivery of care. Perhaps I'll just add a couple of things because I'm now actually reading the question a little more carefully. So um, with respect to access issues and healthcare uh, writ large and ambulance offload times, I just you know want to say that we are doing our absolute best um, and pulling out all the stops to make sure that people have the best access possible. But the pressures we are experiencing right now, not unique to Niagara, but are ex being experienced all across the province. So I just want to assure people, I know it's been difficult recently in our emerges, for example, um, we're doing our absolute best to remedy that um, uh, to the best of our ability. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is the um, the weather issues. And this gets brought up quite a bit, um, mostly from people in, in Fort Erie um, and sometimes in Port Coburn. And that obviously uh, will not change. There will be the occasional um, snowstorm in, in uh, the Niagara region, which often hits hard in the south, um, that won't change. And so obviously, um, if people are experiencing an emergency in a time where the uh, the weather is such that they shouldn't be traveling by car themselves, they need to call 911. And that's the case now. Um, if you had an emergency and you needed to get from Fort Erie to Niagara Falls, it's what you would do now, hopefully, and it's what will have to still occur in the future. Thank you, Lynn. Our next question is asking about the projected date for South Niagara opening and what is the overlap, if any, with GNGH before GNGH closes? What happens to the GNGH building once closed? And they are concerned it will be a waste away as yet another abandoned building in Niagara. Uh, thank you, Michaela. I can take that. It's Angela's. Uh, so the uh, South Niagara Hospital is scheduled to open in 2028 um, and at which time the services uh, that are currently at the Greater Niagara General Hospital will transition over on day one. It's similar to the exercise that we went through for St. Catharines where we had two hospitals. We had St. Catharines General and Hotel Du um, Hospital at the time and all patients were transferred in one day over to the new uh, St. Catharines Hospital at the time. So similar process for Niagara Falls, so 2028. As far as the um, existing hospital site, we've um, been in discussions with um, the city of Niagara Falls over the last couple of years as far as use of the site. And the uh, once the new hospital is opened, 
the facility will transfer over to the city of Niagara Falls in exchange for local share, which they have already agreed to do that. And um, we will, you know, our hope is that the city will use that uh, site for uh, continued health services, say, for example, or low income housing or supportive housing. You know, um, it, it would be up to the city to decide the future use of that site, but the site uh, will be transitioned over to the city of Niagara Falls. Thank you. Thanks for that question. Thank you. Our next question, can someone comment on concrete plans to successfully recruit healthcare professionals to the region, particularly given the many factors at play, including consequences of the pandemic, government privatization of healthcare services, shortages of professionals across the province and nation, et cetera? What will our region do differently than all other regions of the province? Can Fiona start to answer that one and then I can talk about uh, privatization or quote air quote that um, when Fiona's finished. Uh, good morning. I'm Fiona Peaceful, the uh, Executive Vice President of Human Resources for Niagara Health. And thank you for that great question. There's a few things that we're doing. One is we focus very much on how we recruit talent. So working very closely with our post-secondary organizations and partners. So whether that be Niagara College, Brock University, McMaster, Toronto, we work very closely to give our students an amazing positive learning experience. We have uh, thousands of students who come through our door annually. Um, we also work very closely with those organizations to look at what are the skills and um, qualifications that are needed for the future of healthcare. The other key piece is what are we doing to retain our talent? Uh, we have an amazing team of individuals within the organization. So how do we really focus on creating a culture where diversity, equity, inclusion is important and critical? And the other part is really looking at our employee wellness. The pandemic was a, uh, I think it's reasonable to say it was a, a very challenging time for our communities and particularly in a hospital environment. We were incredibly proud of the uh, physicians and staff and the care that they provided. We also recognize it was very difficult on those individuals. And so we really focus on wellness. Some of those pressures that we're experiencing are nationwide. So working very closely with the province to look at how can we make investments in uh, the future of healthcare. And the other piece that we feel um, very optimistic about is the fact is we're building a new hospital. And what we're hearing is, uh, new grads and, and new individuals to the profession. They're often trained on the leading edge equipment and processes. And so we're hopeful that by having a, a facility like South Niagara site will be, we'll really be able to retain our talent, but also recruit top talent to Niagara. Um, we do feel that the um, type of the model of care that is here in Niagara is attractive to individuals. Um, we have these centers of excellence. We have a very, um, a committed approach to investing in our people. And we really hope that's the differentiator as to why individuals will choose Niagara Health. Um, I'm gonna see if there's other individuals who wanted to provide some uh, additional thoughts around some of our recruitment and retention efforts. So perhaps I'll pass it back over to Lynn. Um, thanks, Fiona. Does anyone else wanna add anything on recruitment and retention before I just comment on privatization? OK, I just I want to do just um, a short, uh, a short explanation of a sort of privatization that the word itself um, is not well defined when we use it so broadly like that. So um, I just want to um, sort of acknowledge that there is some angst in the community about if there is privatization of healthcare services, people will move to those organizations to work. And that's not that that's will happen and that's not necessarily a bad thing if those clinics are out there. I just wanna draw a distinction to, um, there is a privately operated, but publicly funded healthcare services. So that's the first distinction. We already have privately operated healthcare services in the province of Ontario. When you go to a community-based diagnostic imaging center, for example, in a strip mall to get your ultrasound, that is um, privately operated and privately owned. Sometimes it's a for-profit, sometimes it's a not-for-profit, that's harder to determine, but we already have hundreds of uh, community-based clinics across the province, whether they're diagnostic imaging, whether there are ophthalmology clinics where you're having your laser eye surgery done or your cataracts done, um, and there are emerging um, clinics doing um, 
uh, same day uh, surgical procedures. So um, endoscopy clinics, for example, there are many endoscopy clinics where you can go to get a colonoscopy. Um, the distinction is that we have to be very careful of as Ontarians and Canadians is that we are not being charged for those services. So where services are being offered by a private operator, we have to make sure that those are still publicly funded. The second piece is that if those clinics are operating and alleviating some of the pressures out of the hospital, then we must be ensured as Ontarians that the quality of care, the standards of care are as good or better than you would get at a hospital. So making sure that the quality standards are overseen and regulated and adhered to by those clinics. And then the third thing is staffing. So an example is that we are encouraging the government um, very strongly and they are listening that if there are, for example, surgical centers that are opening in the community, those centers must be in close partnership with hospitals. An example is the endoscopy clinics that already exist across the province. We want to make sure that those endoscopists, with, whether they are um, gastroenterologists or general surgeons, they are also connected to the hospital to ensure that we have those individuals um, while they are uh, uh, doing more minor procedures in the community, that we still have them providing on-call coverage at the hospital, that we still have them to provide emergency endoscopy care when something occurs um, where we need an emergency intervention. So the partnership with hospitals as these clinics evolve and start to do more complex procedures is absolutely critical. We've been really clear with the province of Ontario that, um, and all hospital CEOs have been, that there has to be a close partnership with the hospitals in the communities that these clinics are about to open. But I just wanna make sure that the community gets the distinction between privatization versus publicly funded services. Thanks. Thanks, Lynn. So our next question is, are comprehensive team-based models private for, for sorry, are comprehensive team-based models private for profit practices? They are private. Um, I'll draw a distinction. A family health team and that are the services that would be funded by the Ministry of Health through a contract, not including the physicians in that group, would be private not-for-profit because those are funded by the Ministry of Health. They have their own um, board, um, but they are, um, so they're private, but they're not-for-profit. Um, physician offices, so if you go to a, a, a group of physicians or even an individual practitioner, um, they have various names, Family Health Organization, Family Health Network, et cetera. Um, those groups would be um, private for profit. And it's strange to think about it that way, but those are typical, typically a group of physicians who obviously have to make, uh, they have to be compensated. Those clinics need to make a profit because those individuals run their own corporations. So groups of family physicians or an individual physician practicing in the community is their own corporation. And so those corporations will be for profit to make sure those, um, those physicians are compensated appropriately. There's probably a blend of things out there, um, but that would be sort of my, my general understanding of the landscape. Thank you. And our next question, we are fortunate in Niagara region to be building the new South Niagara Hospital and creating plans for the future of the Wetland Hospital. In the region, we also have the new West Lincoln Hospital under construction with Hamilton Health Sciences. While it is not part of NHS, it is within the region. Will it be part of the strategic planning for the healthcare needs of residents in the Niagara region? Will Niagara Health be able to coordinate with that facility, including the new digital record system or specialized services? Why don't we ask Sonali to talk about the digital record first because very, very exciting um, stuff there. And then um, maybe Angela can talk a little bit about uh, West Lincoln and, and the uh, Hamilton Health Sciences running that hospital. Happy to respond. Thanks, Lynn. Good morning, everybody. I'm Sonali Kohli. I'm the EVP for Digital Transformation and Chief Information Officer at Niagara Health. So on the digital sharing front, um, as, you, as you may have heard, Niagara Health is first going to implement our new hospital information system. Once we do that, we will be able to connect with, with Hamilton Health Sciences at some point. Having said that, patients currently who are patients at Hamilton Health Sciences at Niagara Health, they do have access to their records from both hospitals through an app called Connect My Health. So that avail that, um, that, uh, that's available to the patients right now. 
and uh, the patients can share that data with the clinicians that they visit at any time. Soon, the clinicians will have access to that data too after Niagara Health is, has implemented our own hospital information system. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sonali. Um, so as far as West Lincoln goes, yes, absolutely. I mean, we're in, um, uh, we're always in discussions with our partner hospitals. And um, in fact, we have um, uh, an engagement session in Lincoln as well. Um, so we recognize, you know, West Lincoln being on the border and some residents um, go to Hamilton and some residents come to Niagara Health. So absolutely, uh, we do uh, coordinate as far as um, working together as far as services being available. And, you know, we as Niagara Health, as being a partner, as an example, when West Lincoln was um, in the midst of its renovations, we um, stepped up and actually became uh, took, became their um, maternal newborn uh, center because um, they were they were building and unable to have that. So as far as being good partners, that's something that we do and we'll continue to do to see how we can continue to work together with West Lincoln and Hamilton hospitals um, in general. And maybe I'll just add uh, to finish that off. Um, the hospital CEOs for Hamilton, Niagara, Haldeman, Brent region um, so that includes Hamilton Health Sciences, that is the organization that oversees uh, West Lincoln Hospital. We, um, we have a committee and we meet at a minimum of once a month and then during times of stress like COVID waves, um, sometimes we were meeting every day. So rest assured that our region hospital leadership, um, no matter where, uh, where in that region you live, your CEOs are working together all the time to ensure that we don't have gaps in the system depending on um, you know which hospital is overwhelmed versus which hospital has capacity for et cetera. And where we have um, regional programs that those linkages with Hamilton Health Sciences are extremely tight. Thank you, Lynn. Being cautious of time, I'd like to thank the executive team for their time this morning, as well as everyone who joined us for our community webinar. Any questions that uh, were unable to be answered during our time today, will be posted online along with the recording of this webinar. Um, also note that the comments made in the chat as well will be shared with our executive team. Again, I want to thank everyone for their time today. We hope you have a great rest of your morning. Thank you. Thanks everybody.